I want to address this Chandria's Closet's reply that men had to prove they were husband material. That's the point that I actually did bring up in the last recording. Whether it was matrilineal or it was patrilineal secession in a life union or life partnership, what they call a marriage, there's always been bride price paid in Africa. Now, not all families do it. And it will vary according to ethnic nations, but typically the majority, and that's what we're talking in the context, because the girl in the video that we watched actually did some research. She talked about how she was from Equatorial Guinea and her ethnic nation was one of the oldest nations there. Booby people who make up about 6.5% of the population of Equatorial Guinea. Yes, they are matrilineal, but this is the point I was trying to emphasize to her because she was trying to back up herself with one pastor, P, who was trying to give the impression that in natural societies long ago women were very free to do whatever they wanted whenever they established their life unions especially if it was in a matrilineal context now this is not true because even in a matrilineal context what happens is that a man and woman will get married but it is the brother of the wife who is going to inherit the property from her marriage union Listen, now is that fair to the children in that union? These things have to always be considered when women in Western societies are trying to reach back to Africa or reach back into other natural societies of the Aboriginal Americans to try and find some premise to justify what they are advancing as their radical feminist agenda. You see, there's conflict because naturalist societies have always had balance between God and goddess. You see it. A woman cannot be a god, like they're saying the black woman is god. No, the black woman is goddess. The black man is God, you see, because in nature and in naturalist spirituality, there are always these polarizations like hot and cold, hard and soft, fast and slow. All of these principles and polarizations always operate around the fact that even if you're saying hot and cold, it's a temperature. Even if you're saying man and woman, it's a human being. So they're polarizations of a human being. Therefore, they actually are equal. Which is why when the Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught us in the Supreme Mathematics, it's first three degrees, knowledge, wisdom, understanding, the woman is second but necessary to the completion of the physical cipher, you see. And our black women now have played into the agenda because they're not reflecting on the fact that it was one system of oppression that keeps us both down. And that's why the black man has not been able to rise up since the 1960s with the assassinations and the murders to check the system. Jesse Jackson and individuals like that came up with the idea of integration, that let's try and work with the system. And they try to work with the system, this is what the end result is. It's not giving out the fruits. So the black woman now rising up to the level of Kamara Harris, who's become the vice president of the United States, is leading an entourage of women in a matriarchy with an ideology that is spreading all over the earth. If you look at Black Lives Matter, two of the main founders were Nigerian women. So this is where all of this influence to see African-American women trying to go back to Africa to see if they can find some kind of matriarchal, matrilineal concepts to back this radical feminist movement without also giving the facts and the truth, which is my conflict, that men, the sun, has always been balanced in relationship with the moon because the universe is not complete without the sun, moon, and stars. That's one, two, and three. Knowledge, wisdom, and inner standing of understanding. So anyone who's not able to represent their knowledge to this level You've not understood, you've not understood, whether it's Pastor Peer, any woman trying to say that women are greater than men, or people are trying to say with the MGTOW movement that men are greater than women, it's, 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 it's a misunderstanding of the natural law and principle. And that's the point that I wanted to bring out. If you all are going to continue riding on this, you're riding on an anti-black agenda. You need to get this very clear. And the problem now is that they're trying to infiltrate it to Africa through this link. So you see, that, that, check out the meme. When Bay wants equality in our marriage, but wants me to pay bride price. The man is paying the bride price. So if you see it, there actually can't be this structural that they're trying to bring from the West, which breaks the man, which isn't equality, it's just an agenda. Because you see, whenever there would be conflict now in our marriages here in the African society, and it got to the point where the man and woman had to separate, the divorce was not taken to the government which would use all this manipulation, it was taken out back to the family because the man had already first given a compensation to that family. If it proved that the man was wrong and he violated the marriage, then the refund, you see, the bride pass being refunded or paid back would have disputes. But if the woman was actually the one who was at fault, let's say committed adultery, or was disrespectful to the husband to a heinous extent, you see, a lot of the things that we see going on today then the bride price would have to be repaid by the woman's family. And the reason for this now and why marriages in the past lasted so long is because it created a type of social conditioning in which now you would see that a woman going into a man's home would have the respect 
respect for him, understanding that, of course, I mean, at times you see families get extravagant. I saw something in South Africa where a bride price was paid almost equivalent to 50,000 rands or $50,000. And you, you can imagine now, an old man in retirement now or family now being forced to pay back this because their daughter was unruly on her own unaccountably. In her capacity to demonstrate all of this feminine toxicity, you see it, my people, we're really finding out that it's this issue of unaccountability that a lot of women don't want to find themselves confronted with. And that's where the issue is. Because the pretext for bride price being paid was that the woman was chaste or a virgin. Get the point. The high bride price and the high value of a woman in traditional naturalist societies has always been that it was being paid under the pretext that the woman was brought up properly. That's why we say it's paid to compensate the family. The family is paid for raising the child right now in the context of modern society, sending her to school, giving her proper ethics. All of these things would make the bride price be expensive. And the capital point on it was always that she was supposed to have been chaste and a virgin. The bride price actually existed to regulate the relationship between the man and the woman. And this is what I see a lot of women not wanting accountability, especially from the West, when they reach back to our naturalist cultures, they're leaving out all of these elements, which guys, you need to really put them on the table. Because if women are going to disregard the value of bride price, then why will men continue to pay it? Especially in African societies. If you're discarding this culture, then what regulatory system do you want? It means you want the government to check your black men. So me now, I'm just going to drop to you all this African logic so that if you want to apply it, you can take it and realize that even when you're dealing with Shorty and she wants that money up front, if that's what it is, that's what it is. Because the, the woman who wants to be in the house, she's calculating hypergamy. The, the woman standing by the road on the strip, she wants immediate hypergamy. You know, the one on the OnlyFans, you, you know, the, the one who's talking about how she wants a man with six figures and six feet tall, you know, all of it. So fellas, you see the problem now, our standards have dropped. And it, our standards have been forced to drop because the trickage of the government system and these agendas. And they're slowly lulling a lot of weak men who don't understand that they're letting themselves being violated because they're running after a woman's skirt. But men who just recognize simply that we are an alternate polarization and there should be balance on this earth in the way that we will relate to the opposite sex. This is the facts. This is the context of how things have to go down. If they're not going to go down. That means that you are not respecting yourself as a woman, you see it, because this exchange is based on your dignity for your family and the compensation that was given to it for the right that the man's going to have a legacy of children with you. And you have to also respect that. So this big responsibility to a woman, if she's not going to respect those standards, fellas, then I'm going to blame you. Because a lot of men like to give forward these morals and ethics. A lot of men are like, oh, Jesus Christ principles of you shouldn't sleep with a woman before you're getting married. But a lot of you men go out of your way intentionally to do this. And because you don't respect that this original structure was there. And because a lot of our women don't respect that this original infrastructure was there. You don't respect your father anymore. You don't respect your mother anymore. You don't respect the dignity of your family. So you think that you can be in so many free relationships around to the point that, I mean, like guys are saying, they, they, they're not interested in getting married anymore. So until we come back to standing on these logics and principles, my family, it's not about talking about the government, it's not about talking about the man and the woman, it's about looking at yourself and asking yourself, do you value the dignity of your family and your representation in the community when you are out there running around, dodging in the club, doing all this and that, and then you still think that you'll present yourself to someone's responsible mother or father? Let's not even talk about whether the person's high value or low value to their parents, to have them look at you as the right person to continue the legacy of their son. That is the question now, because I said, whether it's matrilineal or patrilineal, men have always paid bride price to prove that they have the right to be married to that woman. So what has the woman actually done now to prove that she has the right to be married? And she gets into the marriage to prove it, but when she can't, the bride price kept everyone in check. Respect, my fam. You got the message.